a reminder of New Zealand's agricultural heritage, sadly fallen into disrepair. It's this classic DC-3 and the pioneering feats of the late top-dressing legend Aussie James that is the focus of a newly launched conservation trust in his name. The trust aims to restore the once proud DC-3 to its former condition, inside and out. We're going to put a roof over the top, well I've got a small subgroup working on that at the moment. Uh, and then we want to look at how do we re instrument the aircraft and as, as really as part of the ag heritage sink sector here to, to really I guess, show part of the history of, of agriculture and, and why New Zealand is number one in the world in grassland pasture. It's all to do with fertiliser and stuff like that. Friends and family of the late pioneer were treated to a special trip aboard an original DC-3 over the fields of the Waikato where Aussie made his name. Aussie's daughter and Foundation trustee Lynette James says Aussie would have been happy with the turnout and especially the aim of the project. He will be chuffed. Today's his birthday actually, he'd be 91 today. So it would be, um, you know, this is the best present you could ever give him. Yeah, very special. Starting in the early 50s, James pioneered a new way of dressing inaccessible crops all over the country. Firstly using Fletcher aircraft, then moving into tiger moths, before finally taking the previously untried step into the massive DC-3. They carried around about three quarters of a tonne of product. So to um, get this concept going, we carry we averaged sort of five tonne, a bit more, a bit less. Um, it was a pretty big step. Former pilot Les Marshall says the efforts of the trust could be the last hope to save the old plane from the scrap heap. If I was here, you'd think this was a grand idea, and uh, it did um, be full of encouragement and congratulations, I'm sure, because if this was left outside too much longer, there won't be, there wouldn't be anything left to salvage. But if they can get it under cover of some sort now and um, and remedy the the, the um, corrosion, etc., that's taking place in the thing, it'll it'll hang together for a long time yet, I'm sure. The move into larger planes was seen as a world first and was heralded at the Trust's opening ceremony as transforming New Zealand agriculture forever. I can remember the King Country was covered in scrub and uh, poor pasture and it was only the advent of aerial top dressing that brought a lot of the King Country into highly productive land that it is today. Many stories were told about the early days of the company, including some of the hazards of working with such large loads of superphosphate. So, in desperation, I got down at 50 feet on the beach and dumped it along the beach, which was the only thing I could do. And I thought I'd got away with it, but apparently, and unbeknown to me, there was a school trip. Uh, <laughs> and they were all camped on the beach. I didn't see them. So, I think I still hear about that phosphate that I dumped on this sandy beach. But I'll tell you what, thank you very much for doing what you're doing. It's, it's a pleasure to come here today to hear what's happening and I'm so proud of it. The Trust is aiming to raise around half a million dollars to restore the old DC-3, but more importantly, they hope to keep the memories and a New Zealand legend flying high. Drew Chappell, Country 99 TV News.